This is the easy 80 board we got up and running last time. I have finished the build and soldered in the pin headers and I have also taped a breadboard to the top side of the board. To go ahead and load code into the easy 80 I will be using this board. You can find a link to the schematics for this in the video description. Of course you can also build the circuit directly on the breadboard if you like. The module plugs into both the debug interface and the serial port of the EZ80 chip. That way it can be used to not only load code into the chip but also to interact with the code. The module contains a MAX3232 level shifter that translates between the 3.3 volt signals on the board and the plus minus 8 volts on these RS232 connectors. The second chip is an AT Tiny2313 microcontroller and it handles the debug interface. Ok, I have now switched to the PC and I will just connect to the serial port on the debug chip. So the output that you can see now comes from the AT Tiny2313. It accepts some simple commands that allow me to manipulate the EZ80. For example, I can look into the registers or read from memory. And indeed, as expected, the memory is still empty, well, filled with FF. I could, of course, now go ahead and again assemble machine code by hand and type it in by hand, but I won't be doing that today. I will be using an assembler and I have in fact already prepared a little program. But let's have a look at the makefile first. I'm using this makefile so I don't have to remember all the commands used to compile and load the program. So I'm using ZADASM to compile and a simple Python script to download the code into the EZ80 through the debugger. ZADASM is part of the Z88DK project you can find the link in the description. So let's have a look at our first test program. And of course it is a hello world program. So I shall print out hello world on the serial interface. The first line is an org directive that tells the assembler where in memory the program will be located. I've also defined some constants for all the I.O. register addresses I'm using. So I don't need to remember them and the code becomes much more readable. The B register needs to be set to 0 because the Easy AD has 16 bit I.O. addresses. First, we enable the alternative pin functions for the transmit and receive pins on port D. Then, we use the line control register to enable access to the baud rate register. Then, we set the baud rate to 9600. And then, use the line control register again to set the default serial port parameters. All this is done by loading the address into the C register and the value into the A register and then using a simple OUT instruction. Finally, the transmitter and receiver are enabled so we can go ahead and print our little message. The message itself is located right at the end of our program and will be put at the end of the binary file by the assembler. To print the message, we first load its address into the HL register. Printing itself is done in a loop. First we load the current character into the A register from the address in HL and then we use the AND instruction to AND A with itself. This won't change the value of the A register but it will set the zero flag if A was zero. If so, the program jumps to the end. If not, we can go ahead and transmit a byte. But first we need to make sure that the device is actually ready to transmit yet. This is done by reading from the line status register using an in instruction into the A register and then checking bit number 5. If it is 0, we have to wait and try again. Otherwise, we can go ahead and use the transmit hold register and output the value that we again have to read from HL because we lost it in the meantime um, to that address and then increase HL and just jump back to the beginning of the loop. 
Eventually the program will find the zero byte that marks the end of the message and jump to the end, which is just a endless loop. Now I can type make and that ADA will compile or assemble the program for me. Before we load the resulting binary into the Easy80, let's have a look at what it looks like. So this is the machine code and using an assembler made this much easier than creating this by hand, although it is entirely possible to do that. I will now connect directly to the serial port on the Easy80. You will see that on the right side here. So let me just connect. If our program works, we will see the output on the right side of the screen. I now run the script that loads the binary into the Easy80 and runs it. And as you can see, it printed out Hello World. Let's try that again. I will just break and reset it to zero and then run it again. And again it printed out Hello World. So I can repeat this, break out of the endless loop, go back to the beginning and run. And if we have a quick look into the memory, we see the machine code that we loaded into the chip. And let's just run it again. Well, and again. Okay, I think that's enough. Using this method, I can easily assemble code, load it into the Easy80 and test it. Going forward, I will use this method to write an entire operating system, or at least the most important parts of it. For this build, I won't be adding keyboard and video yet. I will stay with the serial port for a while for two reasons. The first reason is that for a proper keyboard or video driver, you need some essential parts of an operating system that I don't have yet. The second reason is that I'm often traveling and having the Easy80 connected to my home PC, I can log into it from anywhere and work on the project even if I don't have a monitor with me. I can just use my laptop or even a tablet or smartphone if I'm desperate. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't be afraid if you didn't understand all the details of how the assembler works. I will go into more detail next time when we build the first essential part of an operating system, a function for outputting messages, just like we did today, but a little bit more advanced. Until then, thanks for watching and goodbye.